Yeah, as I, he's a nice guy. Good intentions. You can tell he thinks a lot about the game. I, I think he gets in his own head, kind of like I do. It's tough to break that habit. It's like, it's a good habit in the sense that you're critically thinking, but it's a bad habit because you you get in your own way. Banana slam. Giant. Very nice. Um, so, so uh, why are you here, man? Yeah, I've been I've been typically been a carry player almost all my life. I, yeah, I've just loved hearing that sound of the cre the creeps make every time you get the last hit. I've been struggling lately. I guess right now I think I'm at around divine two. My peak was rankless immortal in SEA. Yeah, and I'm I'm just really looking for like ways to improve. Like typically, I found I've been winning lanes, and then sometimes like. If the carry matchup really isn't that great, or like the oppo like the opponent carry just um um blows up, and they just get so many items, I just don't know what to do. Sometimes, like I think I think I did fine in lane, and then I just don't have a game plan because I'm I'm not sure like how many items I need to be able to take them on. And typically, my my default response is to just go back into farming, trying to um eventually outscale them, but. You know, sometimes since the matchup doesn't work that way, I I just don't. And then I just struggle to actually visualize a way to win the games. Like, I don't have an actual plan. Like, yeah, we can take a good fight. Yeah, we can split push them. But these are, like, all super general things. And then I have, yeah, and I, I, think, I think I just about covered that. Uh, okay. Sounds good, man. Um, you have a few replays in mind that you want to watch? Uh, yeah, sure. So, the issue usually with 5k to 5.5k players, eh, 5 to like 6k-ish players, is uh, your inability to assess matchups and uh, adjust from game to game. Usually you yeah. guys are able to play, like, your hero well, but you're not able to play according to, like, what the opponent heroes are and what your ally heroes are and stuff, so, um, like, you don't adjust properly. So, I guess my question for you is... Uh, need to take a dive into your mind a little bit and say like ask you what would you say about the pl alk matchup as the game grows later the alk hey, is definitely buddy. gonna lose it's out the, the biggest problem is if he gets if he gets big early on and you don't have your illusions aren't tanky enough to uh, man fight them properly you're just going to lose but like as the game progresses if you get a uh, heart or maybe a satanic like Alt can't really do anything and it eventually just completely loses especially since he can build like scotties and like burn all of his mana and there's not much he can do about it and you can would you consider pl players. to be a man fight hero sometimes i think it depends on what hero he's man fighting I'm asking, like, you know, Troll's a man fight hero, 100%. Urs is a man fight hero. Would you say Troll is a man fight hero? Or, sorry, would you say PL is a man fight hero? Uh, nah. Okay. Not at the same level. So, I, when you say, like, you can't man fight somebody, I'll just say I think that's, like, incredibly irrelevant to the PL matchups because he isn't a man fighter. So, it's not like. I'm just telling you ahead of time that, like, there's different aspects of Dota that apply to different heroes, and in this case. Yeah. You know, man fighting doesn't apply to Peel because that's not how he wins games. So, a little bit awkward here. You don't have mana to TP. Uh, <laughs> that's life, you know. Sometimes that shit happens. You're going to drag creep aggro to your range. At least you tried. I figured, like, at that point, there's there no salvaging the Echolibrium on that. So... How do you feel about this lane pushing, and uh, like your hero against their heroes? How does how do you feel about this? I don't feel great about the Tusk because he's actually quite scary. He can get some space to chase you down. Clinks, uh, I I don't think it matters too much where the lane is. Okay, and how, so like how much he can uh, like do. what about Tusk is like scary to you? Tag team, and if he got an Arb of Venom. Okay, so if he tag teams, what's your response? It should have been W. I, I mean, it's just like, this is the kind of stuff that I flame 5k, 6k players for. It's every single time. So it's like, what's your issues in lane? What do these specific heroes do to you? What's your response if they're going to do it? This is the kind of stuff that like becomes instinct if you learn to think like this. So like the second I see you level this, I know you're not thinking. 
because the lane's pushing, which means Tusk is a threat to you, which means he has tag team, which is a threat to you. When you're a PL, your response to tag team is to immediately doppel. So the fact that you see the lane pushing, you know Tusk is a threat to you, and you're not leveling doppel, it just says so much about the transition of, or like translating your, uh, your knowledge into actual gameplay. So the questions I ask you to ask yourself are what you need to learn from this session. That's what I emphasize to everybody. So I mentioned like, what is this guy? How does this guy threaten you? What are the good and bad parts of this lane? What are you going to do if they try to capitalize on their advantage? Like, is it something you can dodge once it happens? Is it something you have to play around? Is it something that like doesn't threaten your hero? So you're okay. It's a good matchup, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, I don't like the fact that you uh, skipped your W here. It may not, it may not uh, backfire. You never know. Uh, but, um, if I was the Tusk and I saw that you didn't have your W, I would be very aggressive on you. Um, when the lane's pushed out. Okay, so you're playing defensively. Like, my typical plan against the Quinks is to just sustain, like, I think of them like a Scarifer, like, they just burn their mana and then eventually... Once you've, you've, once you've sustained through most of the harass, if you can stop them from getting fired to use mana and then back up, you should be fine. Yeah. Uh, is, that, uh, is that a good way to think about it? Yeah, I think, I, I'd say on PL, it's all about just, just sustaining through the first five levels. And then once you get to six, you're pretty much win against everybody. So some heroes, you have to bully them away to sustain yourself. Other heroes like Sky, I literally laned PL against Sky earlier today. Uh, you just pretty much avoid fighting them for the most part. And then if they overcommit, you can do like this. But yeah, you're playing the lane, right? Like the way I see you playing it is right. My point about like your mis like your skill at level two is if you make 10 mistakes like that, one of them is going to get you killed. And so the funny thing is at the highest level, you don't always die for making a mistake. So the higher MMR you are, the less likely you are to make mistakes. And it's also the more likely your enemies are to um, punishing your mistakes as I'm watching this. This is unfortunate. Um... So, the way I look at this double Wraith Band is I think it's, like, okay. Um, but I don't really think it's, like, how you play this patch. <laughs> so, double Wraith Band, like, wh why are you going double Wraith Band, I guess I would ask you. Uh, mostly for the armor. I don't think I'm going, like, Wraith Treads wouldn't really help me. And you can't really skip, like, all of these small items in PL, cause, unlike, like, a Battle Fury Rush or something. So, so you say you can't skip right these right items, right. like, are, are you saying it's worth paying 500 gold for two armor, two and a half armor? That's a lot of gold for two and a half armor. Uh, I guess I wouldn't know. So like, I, what? Com yeah. when would a Wraith Band be good? Sorry? Like, what's the difference between a Wraith Band and a Chainmail? Like, why would you buy a Wraith Band over a Chainmail? Like, why? if you're telling me you're buying it for the armor, why wouldn't you just buy a Chainmail? Uh, I guess I, I was considering, like, it doesn't really fit PL so much. And well, Wraith I'm Band saying, like, what does a Wraith Band do that a Chainmail doesn't do? It lets me farm a little faster once I get... But okay, you're laning right now. You are laning right now, so I'm asking you about your lane. It gives less armor, I guess. No, so, I'm saying... I don't okay, get go ahead. the extra stats, but that's kind of negligible. No, I'm saying, so you get the stats. So what do these stats let you do? Secure last hits and possibly trade. Okay. You no, you did You said it. Trade. You said trade. You said trade. How much trading is going on here? Not much. Like, literally zero. So what I look at this as is like you could just go glove a haste and it's like the exact same thing for your farm and it's working towards it treads, which means your diffusal comes online sooner, which means like these wraith bands, they just don't do anything for you. It's like if you're fighting back, then yes, wraith bands make sense because you need the physical damage resistance, but then you're also fighting him back, but you're not fighting back. You're just getting pelted. So like, why would we invest another 500 gold 
into a laning item. This is a laning item. Like, you are laning. So this is an item that isn't part of your inventory 30 minutes in, which is a big deal. And you're basically itemizing to win the lane. Like, that's what I'm seeing you're doing, and you're not winning the lane. Like, I'm not saying you're losing the lane necessarily, but you don't feel good about, like, what's going on here. You just got, like, ran back to your tower. You've been super low mana ever since the start because of the runes and everything. And we just want to, like, play to get out of this lane. And it's not because you hate this matchup of PL versus Clinks, but like once you get six, you're going to free farm. You're going to rotate between lane and jungle and you're going to absolutely free farm. So we just got to get there. And so what that means is if we're weak all the way until level six, then just build to be strong at level six. Like that's what we want to do. We want to get past the portion that we're weak and get part, get to the part where we are strong. So you're itemizing items that ramp up your strength. Like they, they are implying that you're strong now and you're going to continue being strong. Do you see the difference? I actually don't know how to better explain that. Do you want me to talk no, about it more? I, I think I got it. So okay, so go, go ahead. If you invest in them too much, you will just delay that um, the, the items that actually matter. That yes, is that is delaying the items that actually matter. This this applies to all stages of the game, by the way. This applies to all stages, meaning that like you know, if you see people go Yasha BKB. It's because during the Yasha period, they wanted to ramp up their farm a little bit and they didn't feel like they needed that BKB until like 18 minutes in, you know, so they ramped up their farm for a little bit and then they went BKB, but it's like they didn't invest in like the whole Sanjin Yasha or Yasha with double Wraith Band and Wand and then like, you know, I'm just saying like they, they, they felt out like exactly how much farm items they need and how many strength items they need. And so what I'm telling you to work on, like, let's give you some tangible, um, like, take home, like, this is how you can apply it to your games. Are your items making you stronger or are they making you farm faster, right? Wraith bands are not a farming item. Like, yes, they kind of help you farm, but, like, in comparison to how much they cost to just a glove of haste, like, which goes into another item, you'd rather have the glove of haste if you're just farming. So I'm just saying, like, are you trying to be stronger at this current moment or are you trying to, like, ramp up your farm? And so that really comes down to you itemizing to be strong if you think you can be strong. Like, if I itemize double Wraith Band, I fucking crush this guy. You know, like, that's what you're saying to me. Like, if you go double Wraith Band on any carry in the game, you better be fucking crushing that guy. Like, you better be winning the lane because that's, like, what you're telling me with your items. It's just like... uh an offlaner going double bracer or, you know, a, like whole, a bunch of laning items, double bracer wand with phase boots. It's like, if you're doing that on an offlaner, you're telling me you're winning the lane. So I'm just telling you how to start approaching this. It's something I still mess up. It's something that, um, you know, you're going to mess up in the future because maybe you don't know an exact matchup. But the fact is you were telling me you bought a wraith band for armor, which is just like, I, we need to like nix that one, you know, uh, get rid of that. So... Let's go ahead and play it out. I, I, I know that was a long discussion. Um, seems like a small thing to harp on laning items, but I emphasize to everyone watching, if you can't itemize properly in the lanes, you are not going to itemize properly in the game. Like, that's just how it is, so... Um, okay. So, all things considered, like, the lane's going okay. You know, you're... You're, you're getting the decent amount of farm. Okay. So the simple question I will ask you. Uh, I think I'm What's up? Uh, yeah, no, I, I couldn't hear you for a sec. I think I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. So, the simple... I wasn't talking, by the way. I don't know if uh, you thought I was talking. Okay. So, the simple question I have for you here... Let's rewind. Is, how do you feel about the lane being right here? It's st I still don't feel too good about it. Um, so, here's all the questions you have to ask yourself, okay? 
I, I'll ask you for like you need to get a general feel to yourself. How good do I feel right now? And then we need to provide ourselves with an explanation, okay? Like to ourselves, like why don't we feel good? <clears throat> so there's a bunch of reasons. One, like at this stage in the game, one that people may not think about is the relevance of the opponent mid. It's like, yes, that's a very scary hero. If the lane's pushed up, Queen of Pain, you've already seen her come to your lane. She could easily come to your lane and you're at threat. So that's one concern. But now let's just totally talk about all the things in your lane. How much do you threaten Clinks when the lane's right here? How much does he threaten you? How many creeps are you getting? How much harass, or how many creeps is he getting? How much harass are you doing to him? How much harass is he doing to you? Who's winning the trades? Who benefits from the lane sitting right here? You ask yourself all those questions. All those questions. Like, you need to know all, You need to know the answer to all those. He trades better than you. He gets more harass on you. You're not denying him anything. You're not hitting him at all. And you're just going to get pelted. Like, that's what this lane's going to look like. Like, it's exactly what it's going to look like 100% of the time. Your hero versus Clinks. Like, that's what it's going to look like. So, with that in mind, when we are in a state of Dota, whether or not that's in the laning stage, or whether or not that's, like, 40 minutes in, we need to recognize, is the status quo good for us? Is what currently happening good for us? Okay? Like, whether or not it's in the game at 30 minutes, where you're, like, talking about your team, or you're in the lane. So, in this situation... You just can't keep playing the lane right here. You need to eat the inefficiency to go fix the lane. Like, you either need to tell your Skyrath to go pull, you need to go pull, or whatever. But inhabiting this lane at this point in the lane continuously is just out of the question. It, it's just not reasonable. It, it, the way Dota works is it usually takes inefficiencies to right a wrong. Okay? Like, so whether or not that's, like, smoke gank killing somebody or... Um, walking over to the pole camp and missing like three lane creeps you know whatever it is the point is if you go fix the lane right now then the next like three or four creep waves will be good but because we don't want to take that like temporary missing of like two or three creeps this is like what your next three creep waves look like which is you getting pelted and your skyrath mage getting gone on right like this is what this none of this is going to be good anything that happens here is not going to be good you know 606 that's when i talked about the lane not being good like, let's see how long the lane not being good lasts, right? It's been a whole nother minute. You're getting salved. You're going to walk forward. Same thing. Luckily, we get a kill. But the way I look at these interactions between you and them is it could all be the exact same thing. But if it's happening near your tower, it's just better. Like, I don't really care if you're choosing to fight them. I don't care if you're choosing, like, how you want to go about the lane, whatever matchup you're in. But if we can recognize that there's strictly a better situation for us, we should go for it. Like, we should make it happen. Make this situation happen. So we need to learn to analyze, like, the lane equilibrium when it comes to that. So, like, you're not getting as, no like, the farm that you want. Like, because the lane has been consistently pushed and you guys consistently are fighting them. You're 2-0-3, which feels great, but you have 23 CS at 7.5 minutes. And that's not because you don't know how to CS. It's because the lane's been continuously pushed. Um, so, go ahead. No, go ahead. So if the support wasn't, like, very good and just decides to not do anything I ask, you'd rather I just pull that myself? Yeah, you should pull it yourself, 100%. All right. So, what you need to understand, which is really hard to wrap your head around, and if I'm tilted, I won't do it properly. So it's, like, something where you have to be in, like, a stable state of mind. So, like, for me, it's, like, when I'm really tilted, I get really upset that my support's not pulling. That's wrong. That's not good to think that way. Like, I'm not proud of it when I do it. What you instead need to think is that shit needs to happen in the Dota game. There is a ideal way to do things, okay? Meaning, like, your support should be the one pulling in lane so that you can lane. But it's far better to have you doing the pull and him laning than nobody doing the pull. There are jobs in the game that just have to be done at any stage, whether or not we're talking about the lane or whether or not we're talking like 30 minutes in. Sometimes your teammates are going to make it be you, okay? Like, and you don't want it to be. But if your hero is capable of it, meaning like, you know, maybe being the damage dealer late, but you don't want to be on certain heroes, but you can. It's like on PL, you don't want to pull, but you can. Then you just, you just need to do it. And it's a hard balance to, to achieve. But rather than thinking my support is supposed to pull here, think we need to pull. It's, I want it to be my support, 
but if he doesn't do it, I'm going to do it. Because you know you want the lane back. You know you want it pulled. And it sucks, and it's hard to get used to this. It's really hard to get used to, like, accepting that you can't lane for a creep wave. You know, it, it's hard to get used to it. It really is. Like, it, ch ch shifting this mindset is not, like, an easy thing. It's not like... I, I wouldn't call it, like, a toxic mindset to think your support is supposed to do it, but it's, like, a game-ruining mindset to yourself. It's, like, because you're putting yourself at the mercy of your teammates. Like, that's what you're doing. And there are some things where if your teammate lets you down, there's absolutely nothing you could do about it, okay? Like, there's there, there are things that exist like that. But things like this that, you know, it's not as ideal, but we can do something about it. You know, let's do something about it. That's the goal. So, yes. TLDR. If you're capable of doing the job your support is supposed to do, do it. Okay. So, either way, PL recovers, recovers pretty decently. Got a decently er, early level 6. Even though you only have 25 CS at 7 minutes, you know, you got a couple kills, so it's not the end of the world. So we're getting some kills. I'm gonna fast forward here. I can't hear you very well. What'd you say? Sorry. And I, I was just kind of happy that the quad kept rotating top because I was thinking like, man, we're making so much space, but uh, like I don't, I don't really know if it actually mattered or if it actually made that space that I thought I did. But, gotcha. Um, So, I don't like if you're going Yasha before Diffusal. Um, do you know why? Uh, yeah, just because I want to be able to kick out whoever's in my lane. Typically, Diffusal lets me kick out 99%. And actually, I just bought that by mistake. Uh, I am going Diffusal this game. Gotcha. I just bought the Band of Elven skin. Um... So the way PL works, I mean, this is like how every carry works, but we're going to talk about like the mindset specifically behind PL, is you're survivable if you push W and you're safe. Like wherever you land out of the W, you will be safe. Okay, that's like the definition of PL. So I'm asking you against those heroes, if you W backwards, are you safe? No. Then you just can't do this. You literally can't do this. Like, somebody can TP in front of your face right now, and you're fucked. Like, they can just TP right in front of your face. And there's nothing you can do about it. And this is an example where I tell people, you have to learn to assess every single time you have the option to hit the tower. You have to assess, is my hero safe to do it? The thing about PL is, he's all about creating, like, a little push in front of him. Such that he creates a gap between the opponent and himself. You know, I have like a whole guide on PL where I talk about like the mindset more with PL if you want to watch it later. But the thing is, he's all about having it so that as long as his doppel puts him in safety, then he can farm aggressively. So every game it's a bit different. But when you're dealing with high reach heroes like Tusk and Quap and um, heroes that are able to catch you, then you can't play up this far. Like you just, you just can't. Um, also the new patch kind of changed things a bit since people can TP further away from the tower than in the past. Well, I could just tell you that the second I saw you running forward the way you are, I knew you were nuts. Like, I was like, holy shit, this guy's nuts. Um, so yeah, you're gonna die here. This is like, this is the kind of stuff that makes you lose to Alf, by the way. Uh, that those type of deaths are legit game losing. I, I lose my games purely based off of a death like that. It doesn't mean that... We need to just give up or whatever. Uh, we're going to need one of them to make a mistake now. But let's see what you do. We just need to do the next right thing. You're going to TP top because you see a bunch of people bottom. Okay. That's fine. I would definitely be denying those creeps. He acid sprayed them. So. Okay, we bully them away. You should definitely walk up and clear one more wave. You are... Oh, he TP'd here. Now we need to get out. So the reason why we need to get out right now is because you farm well against Alk. When you tp here, there was nobody here. Like, meaning you saw the opponent's bottom and mid. But now, you've been here for about 45 seconds. They've all had time to react. 
and we don't know where they are. So since they've had time to react and we don't know where they are, we have to back off. And we have to assume they're coming until they prove otherwise. So you see Quap mid. I personally wouldn't have felt safe running top here until I saw like all four of those heroes mid just now. Well, let's see. So you... Go ahead. Would it, would it have been fine if I just... Since I was just hiding in the trees, though... Oh, that, uh, you ideally want to be jungling a camp instead of hiding in trees, but if there's no camp to jungle, then you're supposed to hide in the trees, yeah. Like, that's exactly when you hide in the trees like that. Um, okay. So we see them coming. We s oh, they're going bottom, okay. Just gonna keep watching here. Fast forwarding. Nothing you're doing right now is particularly wrong. So, I make this mistake sometimes too. I need you to understand something. Your hero bullies the Alk once you have Defusal. Before that, it is just not worth the risk to try to bully him away. What I mean by that is, you can be in the same area as him, you can contest him, but to like all in commit to bullying him, you just can't do it because you, that's what the defusal is. That's like what the item is for. That's like what you're buying it for. So this is like buying a BKB in order to team fight, and you're 800 gold off the BKB, and you try to go take a team fight. You know, it's like it's the same idea. You're buying an item to serve a purpose, and you're doing the purpose before you have the item. It just never results in a good thing. Because right now, you're not capable of making this Alk not farm these creeps. Like, you're not capable of it. Your hero cannot stop him. So, by anything you do here, it's not saying that you're wrong to, like, try to push him away. But it just leads to only potential negatives. That's all it is. It's potential negatives. And that's what we need to try to avoid in Dota. It's all about, like, min-maxing and avoiding disasters. As a carry... To have like the fundamentals of that is like so it's more important on carry than any other role because your deaths are by far the most costly so like i would tell you in my games if i died twice right around alk like that on pl i would feel about a 10 percent chance to win and that 10 percent is the opponent throwing but that's how i would feel because the, the, i'm trying to emphasize to you how bad i think those deaths are like those deaths are incredibly game losing um but okay so we're gonna play this out we're going to be in these situations sometimes. Not going to play perfectly. Now you're stuck fighting them before you get your defusal. It's kind of just life. I would TP bottom right now and clear that and get my defusal. That's what I would do. You feel really rushed. You're like selling your items, but you're going to go bottom anyway. So that's like really bad awareness of the map. So you see them here. You see like everyone on their team mid. Like, right now, you see all of them mid, and you see a massive wave bottom. And you need an item that's, like, really close. So this is, like, a very standard situation where you see everyone on the map. You have an item that's really close. You want to fight them afterwards. You're not teleporting bottom in order to, like, farm the entire area. You just need to clear that one wave. Like, that's a really common situation you'll be in in games. Because anytime you're desperate for an item, usually the opponent is, like, trying to fight you. You know, that's usually how it goes. So in this spot, was, go ahead. Uh, I was kind of scared to TP bot because I was worried that they'd run from mid to bottom and they could cut me off before I could walk back. Well, it's like, th that is a potential thing, but like, pr make them prove that they're going to do that, man. Like, you need to go down, like, if your team ditches you, if you say, hey guys, I have my defusal being delivered, let's fight them here, and your team just ditches you and they catch you, like... Let me see it, man. I, I don't believe it. I don't believe if you shove that wave really quickly and then back through the trees and, like, doppel into the trees and take the safest path back possible and get your defusal and they kill you. I, I just don't believe that, the likelihood of that, compared to anything else. You're losing map pressure by not going bottom. Like, that's all I got to say. Um, if you can do a TP that forces reactions and you don't intend to stay there, that's great. The bad time where it's, like, you don't want to force reactions as PL is when you intend to farm that area for, like, the next two minutes you don't want people to show up um so we have our defusal um did you just put a quicksilver amulet back 
<laughs> Dude, you're nuts. That's like the best PL item in the game. Really? Uh, it's like top four, top four, top four. You realize that your E counts as a, as a cooldown. So this is just 25, 20, 30 attack speed and, and 8% movement speed most of the time. Oh yeah, like every time it's, every time my Phantom Rush, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, 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 it's such a good item. I mean, I think M-Claw is probably better, but, um... Yeah, dude, that item's amazing. I just never thought about that yet. Yeah, that item's incredible. Okay, so the enemy team's throwing a little bit. Dude. Dude. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. What's the question? What are you saying? Nah, like... I should be going bottom here. Why? Because there's a creep wave, there are three of them dead. Like, I'm not really in Why'd you buy this item? To kick people out of lane. Okay. Mostly. So please explain to me why you're trying to kick the Alk out of lane at 12 minutes with no defusal, but you see this with his team dead and you won't TP. Yeah. Give me the reasoning, dude. Like, give me the, like, there is no reasoning. Whatever it is in the game that's preventing you from thinking straight, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to have enough time to, like, diagnose you, you know? Like, everyone's different. I have my own issues. Everyone has their own hindrances. But I asked you, like, what the defusal does, and you gave me an answer. I did not lead you to that answer, okay? Like, you led, you told me exactly what the defusal's for. So just do it. Just do it. Like, you know, like, focus on why you're doing what you're doing. Every time you buy an item, you're like... You, you, so what that means is if you know why you bought an item, it means that's what you're looking for, like, at all times. Like, you're looking for opportunities. You're not forcing anything... You're not trying to, like, follow the ALK. You don't want it to be forced. You want it to be natural. You want it to be, like, you see that, and you know that's what you were going for, so then you go for it, you know? So it's like, I see an ALK. That's exactly why I bought this defusal. Insta-TP. You know, like, that's how... And it, once you get to, like, the like the ultra pro levels, you start to predict where that ALK's going to be. And then you, like, show up at the exact same time he does without him having even to show you that. But the fact that you see him here, you have all the information you could ever need, and you're still not doing it, says a lot. So, yeah. Um, okay. And not only that, but your team's also here, so you're just farming one lane instead of two. Like, that's... And your Legion was 100 gold off of Blade Mail. And you're also losing a tower. And then your Skywrath Mage instead gets to TB bottom and clean up the creeps. And now you die. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Let's give up the safest farm on the map where we can bully Elk and die to the Quap alone top. Very cool. Okay. Uh, so, back to the game. Uh, there's really no secret to why you lost this game. Um, at least, like, going... Like, these are the type of games where sometimes I'll win, but I... It doesn't... The, I'll just be honest with you. The game is not in your control at this point. The game is really in either your teammates to, like, carry you through the next ten minutes... Or it's the teammate or the opponent's job to throw you the game. So I'm gonna turn this down with all the fast forwarding. It's freaking loud. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah, that, that's it. That was like the trigger, and I realized, oh, oh shit, um, the conventional PL isn't gonna work. And so I was like, okay, guys, I'll try the. I, I'll try the shard build let's do something that's okay and i understand yeah, the, that it kind of falls apart from here but i want to make sure you get the most out of this time so let's go ahead and move on to the next game i feel like i've seen enough for this specific game it's not that i don't want to talk about when the game gets weird but it's just like not yeah. too many games get weird so like like i would worry about the other 90 percent of your games that we're going to worry about for now um oh uh i have map overlay on my stream apparently sorry guys my bad viewers um he obviously sees fine but you guys can't yeah go ahead and show me the next uh replay when you get the chance here you go so this was an alchemist game okay i think we won the lane at least like i got a healthy Net worth advantage over the opponent, 10 minutes. And I, th I think I got good farm, like efficient 
farm in the jungle, but I just didn't shut down the Sven. And I I just got completely surprised by the amount of damage he was putting out. Okay. And then we just we just kind of lost. I tried to adjust because I felt like Alk should be able to beat Sven in a man fight, like especially once he gets a basher just because of the attack speed difference. But it turns out I was completely wrong and like all the items in the world were weren't gonna change it. But yeah. Yeah, let's check it out, man. Um, it sounds like you're trying really hard to think critically about Dota, and I think that's good. Um, it's, like, good to hear. Um, I think, personally, you're, like, the perfect example of somebody who probably thinks too much to the point that, like, the simple things that you already know are not getting applied. That's kind of my big issue, is that if you know your defusals to bully somebody out and you're not doing it, like, then why do you even bother knowing what you know? You know, it's like, now that, like, there's some things that you're a bit off on, like you said Wraith Band for armor, like, Wraith Band is a trading item. You know, if you told me Wraith Band's for armor, then I, I, you know, I gave you a sarcastic rebuttal where I said, why didn't you just buy a chainmail? If that's what you bought the Wraith Band for. You know, you, the, the Wraith Band's a 500 gold item that only gives you armor at that stage. So, these are little things that we can adjust your thinking on some of it. But a lot of it is just you, you're gonna need to... Stop thinking about all the noise and just think about what your hero is doing, okay? So the problem that I see here is that you're thinking too hard. I really do think this. So let's just talk about the game itself, and I'll like I'll try to give you... Okay, I guess you DC'd. It's trying to put me on the Sven's perspective for some reason. I keep going back to yours and keeps putting me on the Sven. So we're against an offlane Phantom Lancer. That's interesting, to say the least. So yeah, you should have a good, you should have a good start. Okay. You, you're having some serious issues, dude. Um, it keeps putting it keeps putting me on the spin for whatever reason. Okay. So you're gonna drag. Okay. Good response to what they're doing here. So whenever you drag like that, it's. It's really important that you put your perspective over here and see exactly how many creeps he kept just to avoid this um, where you were like back and forth. So right when you drag, just check it out. Just give it like a brief like, hmm, he let one creep or two creeps pass or um, zero creeps. And it, it just you'll just have to adjust accordingly. But that's something where because you didn't check, you didn't know that he let a creep through and then you in, or two creeps through and then you end up missing it. So, okay. Uh... So we'll just do... I, I'm not 100% sure about how I feel, but I think I have an idea of what I want to say. Let me see this here. So you're opting to keep these creeps alive, okay? So in the meantime, what's happening here by having these creeps be alive is that you're denying this XP to, to PL, but you're giving it to Nyx, okay? Like, Nyx is going to be here. Meanwhile, you and the Shadow Demon are both missing whatever's going on over here, okay? So I had this, like, gut feeling that you were supposed to just kill these creeps. Like, you were just supposed to kill these. Because now, like, the PL just got two, or should have gotten two full denies on you guys, and you're missing these creeps. So what happens is now PL's um, just having, a, I, I'd say, a little bit more experience comparatively to you than he should. What I mean by that is, like, in both lanes, and, and you, what you did there, sorry, let me correct this. I'm going to make this clear. What you did there was sacrifice some of your own golden experience to sacrifice some of his. And you're an Alk. That's just never correct, okay? Like, you were trying to do, like, an equally sacrificial move. You know, do you see what I'm saying there by what you did? Yeah. So we don't yeah. want to do that as Alk. There's some heroes that we want to do that on. So I don't want to, like, specifically tell you to never do what you just did. I just want you to know that what you did there accomplished that. And now that I say it out loud, you probably thought, yeah, I don't think I want to ever give up Creeps as Alk. <laughs> you know? So, um, let's go so ahead. I should have, like, acid sprayed it, right? Yeah, either acid sprayed it or dragged it under tower. You know, whatever it takes to get the wave out so that you can go meet the PL at the Creep Wave. Because once you lay the acid spray down, as you see, you, you bully him away. So you don't mind farming near him. The times where you're probably willing to equally deny him is when you feel like he would get more out of the lane than you would. You know? But you can see here that whenever there's creeps, you're, like, free farming. Um, okay, pretty common scenario. Happens a lot. Right here, what do you think you should do right now? 
Mm, maybe I could like hit the uh, melee creep once more, lower it enough so I could take that creep and be in time for the ranged. That's one option. What's like an another option? I could, I could aggro the melee creep to me. Yeah, to so follow can... you, right? So what that's going to do is it also makes it so that... Notice what happens by not doing that. First off, you miss the melee creep, but the PL gets to hit you now because he knows exactly what you're doing, and then he gets to go get his last hits too. So one way would make it so that all the creeps follow you here, and so if PL tries to do exactly what he just did there, your two range creeps are going to be around as well because you dragged the melee creeps to follow you. Right, so all the ra all your range creeps are over here too, and then the PL doesn't want to hit you because he's actually getting hit by range creeps, and then when now the lane's gonna get shoved into his tower, which isn't any different than what's happening right here. Like you don't care if you shove it into his tower; it's already going into his tower. So we're not like trying to fix the lane equilibrium or some shit. And then you get to fuck with him while he's CSing. The way you did it made it so he got to fuck with you while you were CSing. Do you notice that? Yeah. And this is something where I can't necessarily teach you, like, to read this situation happening. But a lot of Dota is just, like, experiencing things and analyzing, like, oh, like, this worked out better. You know, this this led to a better result for me than the other one. So I'm just telling you, I aggroed the late, like, I told you what happened in this dynamic, and then I told you what would happen in the other dynamic. And that's purely by me doing it and understanding, like, what happened in both scenarios you know so i'm just bringing to your attention that if your two objectives meaning two different creeps that you want to hit are in different places it will almost always benefit you to aggro them together okay it almost always benefits you so i want you to get in the habit of thinking if i have two creeps dying at the same time bring them together if you can't do it like for whatever reason that's fine but in that op that was a perfect opportunity um, a little lane mechanic that probably happens once or twice a lane. And if there's little lane mechanics like this that are just costing you one or two CS a game, it adds up. It adds up a lot. Um, okay. Hang on, I just want to ask a real quick question. Yeah, go ahead. In this scenario, this happens a lot, right? Like, where I still have a crap ton of regen, and I'm, I was considering whether I might wanted to get the Void Stone, just because I have a lot of HP regen and not a lot of mana. Okay. Or was, was this the right call anyway? So here's what I need to understand. So... <laughs> Sorry, I just laughed this out loud. So I know you're going to kind of feel dumb again, so it's fine. I, I just want you to know it's like... I, there's a reason why you're 5k, but you're not too far off, okay? Because I know you think critically about Dota. So... Let's ignore what you could have done. Let's ignore all that bullshit, okay? Like, there's there's a lot of different ways you could have gone about this. You asked me, like, you know, I had extra regen left. I, I, you know, I had 800 gold. I could have gone for the Void Stone. You know, you said that. But let's, like, ignore that for a second and learn to think in the now, okay? You have bought a Ring of Health and you have Tangos. What does this mean for you? It means I have a crap ton of HP that I can trade. Yes. Ooh. So why is it that when Nyx is on the right and PL runs at you, that you cower? Why are you scared of this guy? Fucking hit him. Uh, like, with an acid spray? you can just hit him, dude. You don't need to acid spray. Just hit him. The whole point of your item build here is that you have a bajillion regen. Why are you afraid to take damage? Like, I'm asking you, like, think about it. Why are you afraid to take damage here? This is a perfect example where I don't necessarily care which one was correct. I want you to have the items you have and do the right thing. You had a defusal? Go bully that Alk out of a lane. You have a ring of health and a and an extra set of tangos, all the sustain in the world? Trade with the other guy. Force engagement. Like, this guy, all he has is a freaking Morbid mask. Like, this is a fucking joke. Hit this guy. You know what I mean? Like, hit him. Yeah. So, this is the type of stuff that... I want you to have an idea of why you bought what you bought, but I have a feeling in my gut that you tend to think, should I have bought the Void Stone right here? Like, that's what's going through your mind, rather than, I bought the Ring of Health, what am I going to do with it? Okay? That's how we have to help you shift your mindset, because one of them is fucking irrelevant. You can talk to yourself about it after the game. You know, like, you can be like, hmm, you know, could I have... 
could I have gone a void stone there? Like, you know, if you want to watch your own replay, that's the kind of stuff that you can analyze for yourself and maybe min max and question your own decision making. But you just, you don't have time for that. You don't have time for that in the middle of a game. You don't have the time to question your own decision making. Once you're in a spot, you're there. What can you do? You know, what can you do now? It's really important to, this isn't something that I can give you a method of doing this. What do you, th okay, I'm not going to say what do you think. It's a very simple answer. The only way to get better at this is to be aware that you're not doing it. Meaning that oh, you are aware that you are thinking of the other option. Like right now, if anytime you think of the void stone first, remind yourself, I have a ring of health. What am I going to do with it? Like constantly, anytime you think of something that's not the items you currently have and what you can do with them, bring yourself back. Like just, just snap back. Just catch yourself. It's all about awareness and eventually you'll stop. Like that's really all there is to it. Like that's how you break a bad habit. You're aware that you're doing it. You remind yourself when you're doing it. You're not like hard on yourself or anything. You just remind yourself. So big deal there. This is like something that I can tell that because I do it too. So I'm fully aware of why you do it and and like how it feels to do it. You kind of feel out of touch with the game. You're not really living in the now. You're just kind of like you're critically analyzing a game and you're also trying to push a hundred buttons a minute. You know, it, it just doesn't work. You don't win games that way. It just doesn't work. It's not possible. Um, I've been accused of thinking too much in the past and, you know, people were not wrong there. Okay. So we keep pushing in the lane. You got the void stone gold. Get a nice little stack going here. You buy it with the courier. Okay. I don't hate it. You probably could have walked over, but I don't hate it. So, I'll just tell you. How do I word this? Um, when you don't trade earlier, when it was good for you, it's going to backfire. It's really all there is to it. I don't know how and when. Every matchup's different. Every game is different. But if you miss opportunities, then suddenly you're going to find yourself getting bullied. So I just need you to realize that why you're getting bullied by the PL right now is because when he had level 4 Morbid Mask, you let him do whatever the fuck he wanted. That's why you're getting bullied by this PL right now. Okay? As that needs to be clear. Because if you don't bully people right. when they're weak... They will eventually bully you when they are strong. Like, that's just... That's Dota. That's Dota 101. So, unfortunate that you're getting ganked by a co-op again. Um, I would say your build's a bit greedy. In the sense that, uh, obviously, you went Perseverance before Boots. But in the lane you're in, I don't necessarily hate it. The difference of my approach to your approach... Is that... You were in a lane that was unwinnable last last game meaning that you were never gonna bully the clinks away and you went laning items in this game you're in a lane that you're capable of bullying the opponent away i'd say nick's pl is like a two out of ten on strength of an off lane like that's a freaking garbage off lane and you're not trying to win like you're just passively farming with a perseverance do you, do you see like the disconnect there like, yeah. I think you could probably go early phase boots and shove this guy out of lane by just clicking him. PL has, like, four base armor. You know, he's got, like, three base armor. You just acid spray and he's in the negatives. You know, like, and you can hit him. So this is a situation where it's just whatever it is for you, if you want to ask questions, because I don't know exactly what it is for you, you can. But you really need to reevaluate what it means to play for the lane for yourself. You know, am I playing to win this lane or am I playing to just survive it and go farm? You know, there's a big difference. In the PL game, you're playing to survive. In this game, just because you're an out does not mean you don't try to win the lane. If they have a weak-ass lane, you try to beat it. You know, you try to punish the fact that it's a weak lane. And if you're willing or if you're able to invest an extra, like, 400 gold into, like, clarities and raindrops and, you know, your early game items that make you have to buy a bit more sustain or whatever. But that makes you get 10 more CS and PL gets 5 less CS. It paid for itself. It's worth it. It's a big deal. It's like that's that's like how we gauge the efficiency of our own purchases. So 
I, I definitely think you just playing the passive, like, greedy game here is not correct uh, because of the lane you were against. Um, okay. But we're here now, so we got the items we got. With the items you got, I think you're playing fine. Let's fast forward a bit. Gonna get a little stack off. Okay. You definitely don't check the map enough. I, I never know what's going on in the two games I've been watching. You are very much a fan of the sound of those creeps and the looks of those creeps dying. Maybe too much. Yeah, probably, yeah. I, I mean, uh, tell me what's going on in this game right now. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I wouldn't know either. Yeah, that's a, that's a, this is a, like a BSJ 2016 player perspective. Like, this is what I look like in 2016. And I got shit from it, uh, I think it was Sumail that gave me shit for it. Oh, no, no, it was S4. It was S4 that gave me shit for it. He's like, holy shit, you know, BSJ's camera movement, is, or he, like, he doesn't move his camera off his hero. And uh, I'll just tell you right now that, like, what you can learn to do is like you can probably spend I, I would say you could probably spend the next 25 games purely asking yourself do i have to be looking at my hero right now so my question for you is when would you specifically have to be looking at your hero give me some examples probably when you're playing in a dangerous spot okay especially like pushing it down absolutely you need to be ready to react to some danger that's potentially there absolutely anything else um well, obviously, team fights. I think like there are like some moments here where I can afford to look, like when there's like nothing else showing on the mini map, and then I have nothing really to look at except creeps in the lane. Okay. Um, and then maybe when I'm stacking, that, that's about yeah, that's about it. Like I don't yeah I don't really have much reason. So I'll, I yeah. ask you that question because the way to know when you're supposed to look around the map is when to know you're not supposed to look around the map. And every other time that isn't that, the more you do it, the better. Like it's just more efficient. The fact is, Artiz is a better carry than me. If you look at his player perspective, it's fucking nauseating. He's literally moving around the map, eight like he's looking at his hero maybe twenty percent of the time. You know, for me, I'm probably looking at my hero fifty to sixty percent of the time. But the thing is, it's like it's if you can keep squeezing in times to gather information for yourself to look around the map it's just better i'm not telling you to be as good as me and i'm not telling myself to be as good as arteezy but you're doing it literally zero so we need to make it more than zero you know the, the more you do it the better so you can start you can literally spend the next 25 to 50 games purely focusing on looking around the map the thing for me is that when i started looking around the map I didn't necessarily know what to look for. Just like anything else in Dota, you don't necessarily know what you're supposed to find. But the cool thing is, is once you start doing it, just by simply looking, you check people's inventories, you check the map, you realize that random things you see mean something to you. You may not have known that they were going to mean something to you, like looking at them or like before you looked at them. But it's like if you're constantly checking out the lanes in that PL game and you look bottom and see that Alk, that means something to you. And then you're going to go TP. Like that's what, that's what, or maybe you're going to take a bit to process it because you're, you know, you're, you're not too experienced in this. But it's going to mean something to you. And that's the cool thing is that you just get better and better at checking people's inventories, checking the map, looking around and seeing what that means to you just by virtue of doing it and seeing what it means to you. That's really, it's just that simple. So, um... This is definitely just one of those things where you just do it, and because you're a 5K player with pretty damn good knowledge of the game, you're you're gonna get better at it just by doing it. There, there's you're not like a two or 3K player that has to learn these things. Like you don't have to necessarily learn the knowledge that you're getting. You just have to do it and then learn to process the information. That's all you gotta do. So I, I don't like the casual hyperstone. I think it's like strictly worse than Yasha. Um, I think you definitely need Sanj and Yasha against um, Nick's Quap Skyrath Mage. <coughs> it's just too much. Um, 
It's just too much CC uh, that, like, if you don't get your BKB off, you're just going to die full to zero. So I personally would have gone Sanj rather than the Yasha. I think most Alks go for the casual Sanj. I think the Hyperstone is just really greedy. Uh, there's not too much more to that than for me. The issue is that I see here is you're not limited by how fast you're hitting these creeps. You're limited by if you were to die to a gank. Like, if you're hitting the creeps here, you're farming plenty fast. So some heroes, they need to buy items that accelerate themselves. Other heroes just need to not die while they're hitting creeps. And after you have a battle fury, you just need to not die. So fortunately, you never got ganked. <laughs> um yeah. So I don't have too much to say about this cuz you clearly just don't understand the matchup very well. But you're fighting a god strength Sven. You know, like how many times do we got to do that before we don't do it again? You know, the what what's good against a god strength Sven is my question to you. Okay, thing him. Well, I'm saying specifically, like, what would your hero need to have to be, like, good against a Sven who's ulted? Evasion. Or? Crap. Okay. I mean, you know this. And, I don't and you have me. eight armor with no evasion. <laughs> it's like, you're, like, this is just black and white. You're going to die to a Sven. So it's like, we need to start thinking, like, you're overthinking it. You're overthinking it. Like, you're thinking, like, you need to specifically understand the Alk Sven matchup, you know? You need to specifically understand that. It's just like, if you're playing in Sven, if you don't have evasion or armor, you can't man fight him. Like, on any hero you're playing, it doesn't matter who you are. You can't man fight him. Like, BKB doesn't do shit to Sven. Like, yeah, obviously, he's just gonna hit you. So this is the kind of stuff where I don't want you to have to learn this lesson 20 more times, you know, on any hero you're playing. I want you to be against Sven and just be like, objectively judging, you know, is my hero good against Sven in terms of armor and evasion? Because you told me exactly what you're supposed to have to man fight this guy. And you know this shit. Yeah, and I didn't do it anyway. Yeah, yeah and that's... It's, see the common theme? With 5k players, they either don't think or they don't think about the right things. It's it's one of the two. I, I think it's easier to work with people like you who do think. Um, and you just, like, you either the processing of, like, the information isn't there or you get distracted in these games but like i'll just tell you that the only way i ever got better at this was being constantly in the moment it's the only way because if you're not constantly in the moment then suddenly you find yourself on a sven who's god strength and you're fighting him like the thing is if you had thought of like if you were in the moment thinking like about the game you'd be like i can't fight this sven like that's what you'd be thinking because you know that, like, the current situation, you'd be like, okay, I'm ready to fight at this point. I can fight these heroes. I have these items which are good against those guys. And if you see a God Strength Sven, you don't have to process that he's a God Strength Sven. You just know to run away. Like, you just know you don't want to fight that. But if you kind of, like, find yourself suddenly man-fighting a Sven, it's going to take you two to three seconds to process it, and then you're going to be dead or take 80% of your health and damage before you process it. It's like earlier I had a really sick dodge of RP on do on PL and people were like, damn, the reaction time. And it's like, I knew I was in a dangerous part of the map and I saw his support coming. So he was likely going to try to RP me. I didn't react to him RPing. I just predicted that he was going to RP me. It's like, this is the kind of stuff where people over glorify like reaction time by people in the pro dota all dota is is having a general idea of what's going to work and like what you're worried about so it's like i'm if you're alk against Sven and you see the Sven ulted it shouldn't be a reaction you know you shouldn't be like like oh how fast can i figure out what's going on here it's like no you just know what's going to happen based on what you know about dota you know this shit like let's be very clear you know you know this stuff like, we don't want to be... I, I know I tend to be hard on my students, but, like, I, I'm not being hard on you. Like, le, like you're not incapable of knowing this stuff. If it's a 1K player, I'm like, yeah, you're going to have to feed to Sven a few times before you figure that shit out. But, like, you know, you're, you, you know what you're doing. So, you just don't necessarily do it. So, let's see. You go for the AC. Um, the issue I have with AC 
is that it deals with one hero on their team. Yeah. Sanjin Yasha deals with all of them except for one. Okay? So, the way I look at it is, if you buy SNY, you can fight everyone else, but then you still have to run away from a God Strength Sven. With an AC, you may be able to fight the Sven, but you might just die to everyone else. Like, before you even pop your BKB. Or you can't necessarily farm when three of them are missing. You know, it's like... The way I look at items is I have a certain amount of issues to deal with on the opponent team. I try to deal with the most of them possible with one item, and then I move on to the next item. You're definitely, like, trying to do too much here. You're, like, trying to deal with PL and Sven. Um, this Mjolnir... I, I've just played Alk without Sanji Yasha, man. This hero's trash. You, you actually just have to buy it. Hero's trash without it. Uh, the move speed, the uh, status res, and the bonus regen. So you're going butterfly. Yeah, that, well, that was the adjustment I was trying to make. For, like, all right, I need a shit ton of armor. I need evasion. It gives me both, and it helps against the PL's mana burn. To a degree. You're just overthinking it. I think you die to freaking Skyrath Mage Nix Quap. That's what I think you're gonna die to. Like, I, I think you're way overthinking this. <laughs> Like, AC is, like, going to be the item you buy to fight the Sven. That's fine. Like, you're now all inning one problem, and then you still have four other problems. Like, I guess you're kind of addressing PL, too. So I guess you're all inning two problems and ignoring the other three. Um, that's kind of how I would look at this itemization. Uh, Sorry, I'll, I do want to ask you, like, what, what is it, like, about Sanjin Yasha that makes, you know, I mean, I, I, I get the way the stats are good, but, like, what is, I mean, like, how does it change the fact that I'm not going to die to a co-op just because I get that extra regen status res? Do you think that might be enough? It's or? because you guarantee to pop your BKB, and you're not going to get chain stunned by a Nyx before you die. Like, that's what I'm concerned about. I think you just get chain stunned and die. And then it also just helps you when you're ulted. Like, it's going to give you an extra 30 HP regen here. You know, you've been fighting for... 15 seconds that's 450 hp you took less damage you get stunned for less time you you're fighting it's like my what i'm looking at in this game is you can't kill Sven in a bkb and you die outside of bkb so i don't know how you're supposed to play the game i don't know how you you can play this game with the items you have like if you think about it conceptually you're never killing the Sven in a bkb duration and outside of bkb you just get controlled so you have to buy an item that like helps you outside of bkb so that you can hold your BKB. Like, that's what this the Sanj and Yasha does for you. It lets you delay the BKB usage. Does that, like, yeah. make sense to you? Like, I guess what I'm trying to... What I want you to take away from this game is, like, how I created a vision of your team fighting. Like, you don't have a plan that works here, ever. Like, you can't kill the Sven fast enough, and you, can, and you need BKB. So because of that, there is actually no win condition for you in this fight. Like I actually, I can tell you looking at these items, you have no win condition in these fights. Uh, you, you just straight up don't. So I actually want to move on to the next game, but I, I mainly want that to be the focus for this game was the early, okay, tangible from the two games we've watched so far. Really need to assess whether or not we can win our lane based on the strength of the opponent and uh our own strength really need to get better at that and then itemize accordingly checking around the map just in general just get really in the habit of uh doing that and then focusing on the items we have rather than focusing on the could have beens i feel like you're probably doing that in your games i can't prove it here but i feel like you're probably doing it those are probably the three tangible things that you could probably ignore everything else i've talked about in this game and focus on those moving forward so we have about 30 minutes left. Let's make sure we get at least one more game in. Do you have another one? Uh, yeah. Do you have any questions about what I just talked about? No, I think it all makes it makes sense. I mean, I say that now, but I'm sure. It's going to take some time to process it, man. Like I, I tell people because it was a unique experience for me getting coached by Koikfa because it's, it's funny to be put on the other side. You know what you're doing wrong, somebody's blatantly told you what you're doing wrong, and then you end up fighting yourself for, like, the next 
three or four months because you want to do these things. It's your habits. You're prone to it. You keep doing it if you don't catch yourself. So it's like, I get it. It's going to take some time to process. It's fine. Um, I just, as long as you're clear about what I'm saying now, so you're kind of within your, you're capable of like doing it on your own of like figuring out for yourself what all of this means to you. That's all I care about. That's, that's all I care about there. Um, okay. So let's load up this next game. You are the jug. Okay. Similar story. We win get, we win lane, I think, and then, or, but their mid got crushed and I just didn't know what moves to make or like what objectives to go for. And okay. things just kind of got messy after a while because like the Beastmaster rolled on us and then the sand, uh, the sand, the PL <laughs> crushed us eventually. And I just, yeah. Okay. I think you put yourself, like, you grieve yourself at the runes a lot, I feel like. Like, I'm surprised you're going for that by yourself, spinning. I'm surprised you spent four lances at, as PL. I feel like you need to care more about your own game than you are showing me at these runes. Just concerning. I feel like it's going to lose you, like, a third of your lanes or something. Okay, so, let's see here. Okay, that was good. Okay. I'll ask you. What does Pango Swashbuckled mean to you in this lane? Basic ability levels means I can't kill him unless it's off cooldown. And I generally want to avoid giving in too many creeps to Swashbuckle. Okay. Right? Yeah. So what would you say at least half of his Swashbuckles are going to be? At uh, this point, just to get CS. Which CS? A range creep. So when he swashbuckles, what should you immediately do? Well, I can deny the range creep if he does it, or I deny the other creeps that he brought into the What it. should you immediately do if he would use swashbuckle to get the range creep and he just used swashbuckle? Uh, I guess I could spin. I could go on him and try to spin him down. You drag creep aggro to your range and get it killed before he has swashbuckle again. Oh, okay. You see? Okay, so here's how Dota works in the lane. It's a lot of micro transactions, you know, and we're not talking about, you know, EA games trying to, you know, milk you for money here. We're talking about little trades that are all about playing off of the opponent's hero like that's all it is and like playing towards your strengths and against his so you need to think what he's going to do with his spells and if you can make it so when his spells are not available that you can make whatever that situation is happen that's perfect so it's like if the two things his swashbuckle means to you are securing range creeps and that he can get away from your spin so what I would immediately do every time he swashbuckles is drag aggro to my range and then posture aggressively where if he were to walk forward, I would just spin him. Does that make sense? That that's like yeah. the immediate reaction? But that's something you could do in every lane matchup. What do your skills mean? When would you use them? When does he use his? You, you see what I'm saying? How you can start really critically thinking. It's like, if you want to reliably climb past 5k, this is the kind of stuff that some players kind of do off of instinct. You know, some of them, you know, they can't give you necessarily a reason why, but they'll do these things pretty well. But I personally think that this is the kind of stuff that if you critically think about it, it eventually becomes instinct. Like, like for me, the second I saw him do that, I'm like, yeah, drag out of range. And then the second I don't see it, you don't do it. And I'm like, oh, well, he doesn't know this, so now we need to talk about it, you know, so... It's like you're going to get some denies, you're going to play aggressively, sure, but if if he swashbuckles this range, then you're already like paying the price for not doing it properly. Um, because you didn't drag to range automatically, okay, let's even talk about this more. So, when he doesn't have swash, you want to play aggressively, correct? Yes. So when you play aggressively, what's that going to do? Zones on the way from the creeps. No, so what just happened to the lane when you played aggressively? Oh, yeah, it pushes because it, it pushes it. Is. So that's another reason that you'd want to drag it to your range to set up aggression because then the lane's not going to push as hard. 
It might not even push at all. Is this like all of this stacking up to you? Like you're actually just shoving the lane into this guy. Like you're, you're and you don't really want to. It's another lane similar to the Clink's PL lane where the closer it is to his tower, in that case, he was more of a threat to you. In this case, you're not a threat to him anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah. In the Alk versus PL lane, you're not like threatening each other. You're just trading consistently. So we don't really care where the lane is. We're just going to cast our spells and take trades. Like, that's what we're going to do, okay? Like, that's that lane. Because the, the position of the lane doesn't necessarily mean much in that one. Neither of you really has kill potential. Neither of you has chase potential. You're just like two carries, you know, farming against each other. But in these other two lanes we've talked about now, position of the lane matters a lot. So every little thing you do that messes this up uh, adds up a lot. So, uh, yeah. This is definitely a lane that you should have been able to control better. Notice how whenever you go aggressive and the lane was not pushing into you, now the lane's going to push. So this is even more important. This little move right here to right-click this creep is, is, is a throw. This creep needs to die, and you need to know that. This creep right here needs to die. This shit needs to die, and you need to know that. Like, this has to die. And that needs to be in the back of your mind, and it has to be known. Because if that creep doesn't die, the lane looks like this. 30 seconds later, right? 30 seconds later, the lane looks like this. And then it stays here. And then eventually... Oh, are we gonna get a kill? Okay, no, we don't. Close. I just have a question though. Go ahead. Um, so like, there are lots of situations where you want to pull the range creep, but I'm not entirely clear on when you wouldn't. Like, it, it just seems like something you want to do in every lane. I mean, if Pango still has Swashbuckle and you pull it to your range, he's just going to swash the range creep. You're like giving him the objective he wants. He has a spell available and you're giving him it on a silver platter to use it on the range creep. If you're against a Pango, a Legion, these, like, heroes that have these, like, somewhat long-range nukes on range creeps, you want to ideally force them to use the nukes before the range creep's low so that you can then go deny the range creep. So if they have an ability that secures them the range, you don't want to make the range die when they have it available. Like, that's not what you want to do. Okay. It's like so when it's I... It's about go securing it. Yeah, it's about their ability to get it. And it's like, if I'm against a Mars, I'm never dragging to my own range with the intent to, like, deny the creep. The only time I'll drag to my own range is when, like, I just want the lane further back, but I know he's going to get it. You know, like, he's going to get the range creep, and I'm not, like, contesting him for it. I'm just trying to drag the lane back. But, like, the point is, it's like, if you can stop him from getting the range, and by dragging it to the range, you're just letting him get it, that's, like, of course not when you're supposed to do it. Like, whenever he has Swashbuckle available here... I'm not dragging to my own range. Like, I'm not doing that. It's a different thing when you have two range creeps, because in that case, you have to drag it to your range to make it so it doesn't shove into his tower. You know, like, that's different. Like, in that case, you're trying to preserve lane equilibrium. But, like, right now, with the lane the way it is, I'm not dragging for the sake of killing my own range creep. Like, I'm not going to do that. May I drag it back because you want to play the lane defensively because you don't have spin? Sure. You know, like, that's that's fine. But you're not doing it with the sake for the for the purpose of killing your own range. Um, it's a good question, man. It's good questions. Like you know, I, the thing is, dragging to your range is the rule, and the exception is when you're not supposed to do it. Um, so just like everything else, the exceptions a company or uh, encompass like ten to twenty percent of the situations. You know, it's 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 a small portion, but having a mainly. The reason why you're able to come up with the exceptions is because you truly know why you're doing it in the first place. Okay? It's like, if you know why you're buying a defusal, then the times where you're not supposed to use that defusal become very apparent because you ask yourself if you can use the defusal to do that, and you just think you can't. You know? It's like, oh, I actually can't bully that Ember Spirit away from me with a defusal, so I'm not going to go defusal first. You know? Like, that's what I bought it for. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's like, if you understand the idea of, like, what the range creep means in these type of lanes, it's like, the lane, the range creep is the creep that puts the opponent out of position in order to get it. A lot of people have asked me, you know, BSJ in the past, range creeps used to be worth, like, twice as much experience as melees. They're pretty much worth the same amount as melees now, only slightly more. Why do you care so much about the range creep? And it's just another creep, but it's a creep that behaves differently than the other three. 
You know, it behaves differently. They have to go out of position to get it. It's a little bit awkward. It's like any creep deny matters a lot, but the range creep specifically interacts differently. So we have to consider different approaches to denying the range creep. We have to consider like what else we can do um, and specifically with that. So a lot of little things. I'm going to stop talking and see what's happening in the lane here. So in that case, you forced out a swash with your own spin. So that's a situation where I don't, I'm not going to critique you. You do whatever you want. If you think it's worth him swashing for you to spin, then that's fine. I think that is a fine decision. Okay, we get the kill on him. Cool. Lane seems to be going re reasonably. What do you do when you, you kill the guy, but you eventually push the lane for it? Like, you try to restore to equilibrium, or you just deny what you can? Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll talk about this. So the creep wave was pushing. Pango's coming back to life. You're gonna... Okay. So here's the question, right? How do I word this? I'll actually ask you, genuinely. Is it efficient for you to be contesting this guy? Like, does it feel good for you to be contesting this guy um not that much like he's not that item dependent and like i'm more worried about the pl and ramping up my farm against them i guess okay uh, are you are i'm just being clear are you saying that because you think it's the right answer that i would think or you genuinely think that's the right answer no, I seriously think it's the right answer. Okay, because sometimes people try to tell me what they think I want to hear, and I'm not saying you're, like, doing that. I just need to make sure we're on the same page that you are just giving me what you think is the right answer. So, in that case, it's an important question to ask yourself, by the way. Um, maybe you just weren't thinking about it here. But I ask myself, is it more important to shut this guy down, or is it more important to play for myself? Um... And why might it not be that important to shut the pango down more so playing for yourself? Yes, you're talking about the PL, but what, what other reasons could could matter? Well, I deal with him quite well with his ult. And then I just um, omni him. So he's never really that big of a hindrance to me. Exactly. That perfect. This guy doesn't hinder you, okay? So it's a combination of you wanting to outscale the PL or like match the PL's pace. But it's mostly because you shutting this guy down, or you guy you letting this guy have some farm, is not going to shut you down, right? The lanes where it's really bad to play for your own game rather than shut the opponent down is the games where if he gets level 6, you're out of here. You know? You're fucked. You know what I'm saying? Like, those are the situations where you may lean towards denying them, you know, a bit more. But as Jug, you don't give a shit about Pango. Like, you, you don't care, right? So, in that case... Com combine that with the PL thing. So usually it's a gen it's a general idea of like how much do my timings matter and then how much do his timings matter to me. And then we decide to play which one. So because I just said all these things, when he dies, I'm playing to get as much out of it as possible. That's all I care about. I want to kill creeps as fast as humanly possible. That's what I want to do because we just talked about it, right? So, what do you think you should do right now? Like, let's rewind it. You just killed him. Right? We, we're gonna, we see this kill, right? You get the kill. Now what? I could shove the wave in and then try to jungle, but I don't know if I can do it. I'm not sure. I'm kind of low, low damage at the moment. My exact thought process here would be to attack enemy creeps as fast as humanly possible, and if there's a creep of mine that's below half, I'll kill it. That's, like, usually the sweet spot here, okay? It's, like, you're playing for your own game, but there's no reason to not just, like, straight-up deny the creeps that are half. So doing this whole, like, drag-to-your-range shit, I just want you to realize this is five seconds that could have been hitting the small camp. Uh, you would have skipped the big camp. You would have gone straight for the small camp. I'm just saying, like, at some point, okay, five seconds that could be hitting the big camp, you know? I'm saying it's five seconds that could be hitting a jungle creep. I didn't really know how to express it in your other games, but you spend a lot of time inefficiently interacting with the opponent in all three of, in all four of the games you've showed me so far, or three games, whatever it is. You've you've spent 
a lot of time interacting with the opponent when you just shouldn't. So this is a perfect example where he doesn't do anything to you. You can do whatever you freaking want in this lane and you're interacting with him. It's like, why? Think about it. Like, why? You know? Yeah. Uh, it's a great question to ask yourself. Like, why am I interacting with this guy? And like, it's usually it's more so, does it feel good to interact with this guy? Like, do these trades feel efficient to me? So that's the first step. Or that's like a five, that's the last step of a nine step question that I just asked you. But, you know, fact is, Dota gets a little, a little hectic. So I would probably have pushed the lane in, expect him to get the next creep wave or two, but I would have cleared both jungle camps between the, um, at least the small camp. I would have cleared at least the small camp because if Tiny's here, that's going to put a little of a damper on the need to clear those camps or the ability to clear those camps. So I'll just tell you, you can actually watch the other games back with this exact mindset. Every time that you've interacted with them needlessly in the PL game where you've interacted with the clinks rather than pulling, in this game where you chose to like static the wave rather than push it in and ignore the pango, you die. You die in these situations. And it's not because you're always going to die. It's just that there's no reason to even be there. Like, there's just no reason to have him on your screen. You know what I mean? Like, if you think about it, for your own game. With PL, there's no reason to be right next to the clinks as he pelts you with arrows. As Jug, there's no reason to just sit in lane and let this guy swashbuckle you for 400 damage. I think he has a javelin. No, it looked like a lot of damage. Jesus. Either way. You see what I'm saying, though, right? Yeah. Like, I think you die here because of what you did while Pengo was dead. Like, that's actually how I would come to the conclusion of what you did here. You stayed in lane when you just shouldn't. So you come back. Yeah, this is like a huge thing for you. You are, you static the lane no matter what is happening. You've been, in, when you're PL, when you're Jug, you do not interact with the camps at all in like the first seven minutes. Like you straight up ignore them. They don't exist to you. I, I don't know if you noticed the pattern. You, you don't interact with camps. Watch my stream. Watch any carry player stream. Like in the first six minutes, most games, they'll interact with some camp at some point. Like uh, they will. Whether or not that's like pulling the big camp themselves, pulling the small camp, whether or not that's like pushing the wave real quick and jungling the camp. You've actually just like been in lane on all three games, pretty much, until you're ready to jungle. You haven't like casually jungled a camp or casually pulled a camp when you're still laning. Like you're still laning. I'm not telling you like you're not allowed to jungle or I'm telling you that you're jungling it. No, you're, no, you're not jungling. You're, you're either purely jungling or purely laning. You're not like doing anything in between. Which is just not how Dota works. It's not, it's not like a hundred or zero. You know, it's a it's a gradient. You know, it kind of goes in between. So, my question for you would be that if you're farming in this game and you're trying to match PL's pace, who's gonna be the enemy heroes that you predominantly uh, interact with while farming? Probably tiny. Beast, like the people who are trying to me. I mean, let's be straight, dude. I don't know if you know this patch. What's Beast going to do for the first 15 minutes of the game? Get his axe. So what's he doing? Getting his axe. He's farming, right? He's not He's not interacting with you. So maybe in the past, a Beastmaster would have interacted with you. So let's just be clear. Beastmaster ain't going to interact with you. So what heroes are going to interact with you? Mostly Tiny and Pango trying to take... CS if I'm farming the big camp next to the lane. Okay, and maybe Grim, always the five potential, right? So, if these heroes are the ones that interact with you, how do they interact with you? I would say they probably don't kill me, so they're just going to try to uh, chip me down or get me to use my spin. Okay. Or they'll just take their, or they'll just take the CS. Where they can't, they'll just try to nuke the camp when it's low. How confident are you that that is accurate? Like 
you're really not confident. You know, you don't think you have the right read on that situation. That, that that's how they're going to interact with you. I, I might be missing something, but I don't know if I had to give an answer, that would be it. Okay, I would say that's incredibly accurate. Okay, so you just told me that the heroes that interact with you while you're farming are going to chip you down and are what is your interaction with them like what do you do to them are you looking to fight them i guess is the question no, not at all. like there's some games where you're a farm and carry and you want to like interact with the offlaner because it's like good for you you know it's efficient you know the guy walks up you hit him you know you know what i mean yeah. there's games like that right so in those type of games those are the games where you usually go like phase boots you know and maybe an orb of them you know like I'm not saying on jug. I'm just saying in general. You know, you go these types of items because you're farming, but you're also like hitting that guy. So I'm just asking you in general, how often are you hitting the pango, the tiny, and the grim? Because these are heroes that are potentially interacting with you, right? Yeah. So is it your job to slow them down or is it their job to slow you down? Uh, it's their job to slow me down. Okay. So in that case, you're not interacting with them at all, ideally right? Like, you, you would prefer not to. So, how much do your items need to do to them? Almost nothing. Almost, Almost nothing. So, your items need to be geared towards helping you stay alive, right? That's what you just said? Yeah. So, you realize how we've come to this conclusion, right? Like, it's been a long process, and it's definitely not how you think during the game. But this is definitely something where you watch it back, you know, you, that, because you may not even realize the road I just led you down, okay? But it's this thought process. It's the questions I asked you, the accurate answers you gave me. So the proof is that you are capable of fully understanding the questions I've asked you, right? You've given, I, I, I will say, you've given very accurate answers to almost every question I've asked you. So with that in mind, what does chat think I'm getting at? Let's actually just see chat here. What do you guys think I've asked him this entire questionnaire? What am I getting at, Chad? Let's see what they say. Battle Fury instead of Maelstrom. Wow. That guy's a smart dude. Uh, let's see. Neg Voss 1. Do you see how all of that adds up to obviously going battle fury instead of maelstrom uh yeah like i usually do get battle fury i was just thinking against bl it might be nice to get the maelstrom but yeah. what is your hero's relevance to peel in this game um i'm going to be the late game answer to him so what do you need to do i, I guess farm a bit more so Let's not, I'm not telling you to never go Maelstrom against PL. That's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that PL has absolutely zilch influence on which one you go. Do you see that? Because you're not interacting with him until like 20 minutes into the game. Do you see that? Yeah. Like your items in the lane need to be items that are purely geared towards the people you're laning against. Your items in the mid game, like 8 to 15 minutes need to be geared against the people you're playing against. Do you, do, you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a combination of several thoughts here, okay? It's that you realize you have to scale against Peel. Like, you know that. So this whole lane, let, let's just give you an exact narration of the way you're supposed to think in this situation and get you there, okay? Like, this is this is like the answer key to hopefully... In the future, you can like look back on this answer key and see how we got these answers, okay? We're in a lane where, or we're in a game where we are the sole late game answer to PL. Like, we need to be able to contest this guy in the late game. We are then laning against two heroes that have kill threat on us by poking us down and, and harassing us down. And we don't necessarily care about them, though. Like, we don't have to, like, prevent this guy from getting level 6 because his 6 is annoying only if we don't have spin. So what that means is we can't afford to use spin near that guy. So that means that we're trying to just avoid that guy as much as possible because any any time we spin around him, 
he can just run at us, which means if he's running at us, we're not farming. So that's why it's considered an inefficient interaction, because anytime you spin near him, you are going to miss creeps. So with that in mind, we are going to be spinning constantly. We're not too concerned about killing the people that are in front of us, because we don't have to kill them. They don't do anything to us. We just have to buy items that accelerate us. In games where the guy who, th who we're talking about, in this case the pango, actually threatens you, and you actually need to be able to defend yourself, that's when you strongly consider a maelstrom, because that item defends you, right? Like, that item defends you through aggression. He might be scared to fight you because you kill him, okay? But in this case, we're purely worried about scaling against PL, not interacting with Pango, and the only thing Pango and Tiny do is poke me down until I eventually die because I'm half HP. And then also, I'm having to constantly spin because it's so strong in terms of survivability, and it also accelerates my farm. So if that's everything in mind, Tread's Perseverance as your first items, nothing else makes any sense. Absolutely nothing else makes any sense there when you like, uh, when you talk out loud. Because you just, you know, you know Battle Fury and Maelstrom are your reasonable options, like your 5k. You know these are your options. So people ask me all the time, Battle Fury or Maelstrom? I can't give this answer to like the general Dota community. You think they freaking understand what I just told you if they're 2k? No, they don't understand. No offense, guys. You guys don't understand. But you understand this. You understand the dynamics. I've asked you the questions, and you've given me very specific answers that were right. So now apply it to your items. Like, just apply it to what items do. Like, you told me they poke you down, and you don't buy Battle Fury? Like, dude, think about it to yourself. How stupid do you feel? You're so smart, like, you know so much about the game, and it means nothing because you buy a Maelstrom here. <laughs> You're not trying anything. Like, you know what I mean? Like, people say they tried an item, and I'm like, dude, the item just makes no sense. You don't try anything. You needed sustain against Pango. He hits you with freaking swashbuckle over and over again. Like, yeah. and that's what the lane looks like. You know, you've probably laned it like 10 times. You know, you've probably played this lane plenty of times. So it's like, that's what I mean by just objectively viewing the game in front of you. It's like, like everything, it's, you have a lot of the pieces. You're, you are, I think, struggling to put them together. Okay? So... I think the goal in Dota is to recognize your end goal, but then be currently aware of what's going on in your game. Because what that does is it helps you understand what you're aiming for, but then you have to realize what you currently have to do to get there, okay? Like, at the current moment, you know? So a lot of times people yeah. ask me why you go certain items. It's literally because at that stage in the game, I thought the guy I was interacting with or the the hurdle I had to jump over at 30 minutes into the game was that one i'm wrong there's plenty of games where i mess this shit up you know like the only thing i think mmr indicates in this type of scenario is how often you mess it up you know even the highest tier players in the world mess up item choices and that's why when i like critique their items and people say that guy's way better than you psj and i'm like that doesn't mean he's incapable of building the wrong item you know it's like <laughs> It's very easy for me as a spectator who knows a lot about Dota to say he built the wrong item. That's not me and saying I'm like better than him or something, you know? It's just me saying like because I have all this information, I'm not thinking about pushing buttons. I'm all I'm thinking about is the items he bought. I can tell that he bought the wrong items cuz I've been in that situation before. But like the point is, I'm not telling you to hold yourself to some ridiculous perfect standard here. But the hilarious thing is the way that you know the game, it just doesn't translate to anything. And that's what I think is keeping you at personally at 5k. So I know I've, um, I hope I haven't been, uh, how do I word it? Uh, harsh. I hope I haven't been too harsh on you, but I will say I'm going to be harsh. What the fuck are your neutral item choices? You just chose a chipped vest over a possessed mask. Are you possessed? Like, what's wrong with you? I, I thought it might help farm a little faster. I wasn't entirely sure. Plus, it kind of sub for the, the HP regen component of the battle field. So I know the possessed mask. But the possessed mask is way more HP regen than a chip ma a chip vest. For you, like, because you're a right clicker. Dude, your neutral item choice is questionable. You gotta put a little bit more thought into this. I think you're just being lazy. Okay? I think you're just being lazy. Um, 
your hero is like super low base attack time and the possessed mask is seven damage seven attack speed and it's you know the sustain that you need chip vest is just some hp regen with like 20 return damage that like i mean that's not how your hero farms you know so um i just look at the rest of your heroes who's gonna use a possessed mask uh, you know uh nobody else for sure um we'll wrap this up kind of soon but let's see what you do so we've got the items we've got let's make sure that i don't uh just write off the thought process i told you to have earlier where you know even if you think you messed up you have the items you have so you walked mid pushed in a little bit forced a reaction now you're back top you see beastmaster bottom you see pl top um so what is pl's relevance to you in terms of farming are you happy or unhappy to farm near him? If he has a defusal, then no, no. But if he doesn't, then I think I can, especially with a maelstrom. Okay. So what do you think I want to say right now? Uh, farm towards him. I think I do actually after this camp, um, something like that. Yeah, but like run at him and fuck him up. Okay. So you told me what decides whether or not you farm near the PL, right? The okay. I didn't check it. Anyway. I, had, I was gonna say, how the fuck do I know if he has a defusal or not? <laughs> like, this is I how you learn to check around the map. Like, what I'm saying is, I see a PL top, because you push mid, PL goes top. I don't know how, I don't know, yes. You think the guy can't have an 11 minute defusal, guys? That's plenty reasonable. Like, that's about his, that's about the early timing on defusal. I've seen I've seen ten minute defusals. And I have no idea how good this guy's game is. They're up eleven to four. I would assume his defusal timing's pretty early. This guy went hood, so I'd be like, "Hey, what the hell is this guy doing?" And I'd do exactly what you're doing, but you don't have you you're doing the right play with like not the right like reasoning to do it. Like that, you would have you wouldn't have decided that based on the defusal or not because you didn't look. But you made the right choice, and you can see why it worked out, which is great. I checked it before I ran in. Well, yeah, before you ran in, but you should check it when you're over here. Or even when you're mid and you see the guy TP top. Because if you're mid and you see the guy TP top and he has a defusal, you're not farming your way towards top. What happens is if you farm your way towards, like, right here on the map, and then you see he has a defusal, you're going to do, like, a quick turnaround and then go to, like, the, the Ancients, you know? With farming, you usually plan, like, 30 seconds to a minute ahead. That's usually what you do. You plan like 30 seconds to a minute. So when I go mid, I know I'm either going towards bottom or I'm going towards top. Wait for flame me like a bunch of times because I would farm the wrong direction. And he made me realize that the decision of going top or bottom is actually a huge one. Because it's telling you what you're going to farm next. It's going to tell you what, far, what lane you're farming towards. So it's like if you farm towards the wrong lane, it just looks really awkward. And you waste another 15 seconds or 20 seconds where you, you're like doubling back through the creep camps you've already cleared you know like so it's like a waste of time so definitely you can't just wait till it's currently happening to check items you know it's too late like i understand if you walk up there and then you see that he doesn't have them so you can test him um but okay um so this is a situation where You actually had all the information in the world. You saw the Beastmaster coming, you were fighting the PL, and you just didn't spin. So I don't have much yeah, else to I say got, about that. I got flame for that by my team. You yeah, you saw it all. You were just really honed in on uh, what you were currently doing, I think. Yeah. Um. So there's a lot of moving parts for you here. Um. You really remind me of myself because you don't give yourself the right information to avoid these random feeds so there's gonna be some games where you just own and a lot of it's by chance because you're kind of like making the same play every time and it's not adjusting to like exactly what's going on in the game and exact timings that the opponent has and stuff so sometimes it works really well and then other times it works really poorly um that's kind of just how it goes if it's just lack of consistency you know, people say, like, when the guy looks good, he looks really good, and when he doesn't, he looks pretty bad. It's just a sign that he plays pretty similarly every game, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Which is actually a pretty telltale sign that he's not very good. Um, inconsistency is 
a huge like red red flag of like somebody's skill in the game. Um, I, I I myself still struggle with consistency, and everyone does it for different reasons. Uh, why they're inconsistent? For me, I straight up zone out in what's happening in the game, and I forget like to pay close attention to where like you know the current status of my hero. And then suddenly I find myself wondering where the opponent is because I haven't checked the map in the last 15 seconds. And then suddenly they're three on me and I die. You know, like that's how that's what that's what personally happens to me. So you were I'm going to end it here. But you were in a lane where they poke you down. It's all about sustain. And you're playing against a hero who buys defusal. What does that tell you your item should be? They poke me, yeah. Battle Fury would have been better because. And you're against yeah. a hero that buys defusal. So they poke you down with spells. Their I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure, actually. What does Defusal do? Um, it lets him kick me out of lane. I mean, what does the me? item literally do? Oh, okay. It burns mana. So what does that mean? Uh, I'm going to be struggling with mana. Okay. A lot of the fights. And? Dude, you're way better than this dude. Come on. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. but What's like the only item in fights that gives you mana? The mana regen, mm, probably want the wand. <laughs> um, yes, wand. Really yes, wand. Right. <laughs> so this wraith ban doesn't do jack all, dude. You're never right clicking the opponent. The only time you're right clicking the opponent is once you have like treads battle fury already. So you just have a wraith ban instead of a wand. It's like in lane, all you cared about was sustaining. This is why people start the game with a circlet, and people in my chat ask me, why do people start with a circlet and then not finish the Wraith Band? Well, because level one, they wanted those two all stats, but the Wraith Band doesn't do jack all. It doesn't do anything in your lane. Like, think about it. You, you barely ever clicked the Pango in comparison to how many times you spun him. Like, barely. So if you're going to spin more than you're going to hit him, then you buy rant, Wand over a Wraith Band. A lot of little things that just aren't connecting for you. You're going to have to watch this session back several times, probably uh more than several almost probably the, I, honestly like this is the type of session where we went through so much usually the higher mr you are the longer it takes to process stuff because it's just more complicated this I, i'm just gonna be clear the stuff i gave you today could probably last you months of coming back to this session and like reminding yourself of what i talked about it's really how much you want to do at this session i'm not saying i like doubt that you're going to i'm just saying that like please don't feel like a month from now this session is irrelevant to you or something, you, you can probably look back on this for the next four or five months and learn something from it because it's a lot of shit that's going to be gradual and it's going to take you time to learn it. So uh, do you have any final questions before we wrap it up, man? Do you do you like Alt Dispatch? I feel no, like I don't. Yeah, like the nurse to the gold. All right. Um, no, that's just about it. Like, I think, I think you kind of hit it right on the nail, like, I'm just not implementing a lot of the shit that I'm supposed that I'm supposed to already know. And right on. Then, yeah. And, uh, you know, thanks Cabbage Monster for gifting you the coaching session. I hope I hope you enjoyed yourself, man. Hope you learned something. So. Yeah, dude. Th thanks a lot. No problem, dude. See ya. Good luck. Yeah, as a he's a nice guy. Good intentions. You can tell he thinks a lot about the game. I, I think he gets in his own head, kind of like I do. So. It's tough to break that habit. It's like it's a good habit in the sense that you're critically thinking, but it's a bad habit because you you get in your own way. If you liked this video, please like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, all that shenanigans, because at the end of the day, YouTube does care about that. You may not care about it, I may not care about it, but the YouTube algorithm does. So please do.